this Russia-Ukraine conflict has unveiled this new alliance that's forming between Russia, China, Iran, Korea, could be missing some, but those are all enemies mm -hmm. of the United States. And we're seeing NATO, and we're seeing this new alliance being formed. Is that alarming you at all? Yeah, I mean, it, it is I, me. I was very, I'm very worried because we talk about the money, the $60 billion reportedly that we've given over the course of this whole thing, we as in the United States. That's not including the rest of the Western world, right? That's just us. That's a lot of money. Why would we give that much money, right? Why would it be, I, I understand supporting another government, another military, especially in time of conflict, but that's a lot of money, Sean. Like mm -hmm. that's not just, hey, we supported them. Oh, you supported them how much? 60, 60 billion. That's a 60 billion, right? To me, that's more than a sign of support. That's proxy. That's us fighting China in a proxy type thing. It's not even about Russia anymore because I think if you worked in any kind of US intelligence or any kind of government level, including you know our elected government, you can see based on what's come out of this conflict with Ukraine that Russia really isn't as a big of a worry as we thought they were. They are on the nuclear side, obviously, because they have that. But from a conventional, you know, ground to air type issue, even on the water, they just seem they're just it's it's almost like Keystone Cops type stuff. It's comical. It's ridiculous. And it's ridiculous that we've been worried about them for so long, you know. So this is more than Ukraine against Russia. It's almost getting to the point now where we're fighting this proxy war in Ukraine against Iran and China. You know, and I hope the future of the United States and how we do defense of kind of our beliefs and our values and what we do on a foreign, you know, scale isn't done by this kind of proxy type stuff. You know, we've always done proxy stuff for a long, long time. And, you know, I mean, even when I was in Iraq and you were in Iraq, a lot of it was like that. Many of the people we were fighting were not Iraqi insurgents. They're from Jordan, Syria, all this kind of place, right? It was a place to go and fight the Americans. But when you're talking, okay, if we have a problem with China and we need to take that, that problem needs to get some kind of resolution. I'm not talking about all out war with China, but something needs to happen. I don't think our way of doing it should be these little proxy things with other nations. We should step outside and handle it like the man we're supposed to be. And I'm not talking about all out war. I'm not a warmonger. I'm not, I'm just saying, if we have a problem, let's do it. Let's not do it in Ukraine. Let's address it. Yes. And let's get it out there in the open. And if it causes some kind of geopolitical uneasiness, then that's okay. Let's have that to avoid war. And I get it. You could say, well, we are avoiding war. Yeah, but we're putting, we're helping with war on other people. Mm hmm you know, and especially with these characters that you mentioned, if something has to happen, look at Russia. They're not fighting the Ukrainian army all the time. They're killing innocent civilians. That's not war. You know, we would never do that. And why are we tolerating that? And why are we participating in that? You know, they're, Ukraine's probably going to have to give up a lot to end this thing. You kind of mentioned that earlier. That's not for me to say, like, I know there's been a lot of American commentators being like, look, the off ramp is very simple. Give them this, give them that, divide this up, make sure this, they can never join NATO, all this kind of stuff. I don't think it's for us to impose that on another people, you, you know, to draw a line and be like, all of a sudden you guys on this side of the line, you're Russians now. Like it's not gym class. We're not picking teams for dodgeball. Right. And I don't think we should have a say in that. And I don't have an opinion on that. But something like that is more than likely going to happen. I don't know if that just makes Russia end this thing. I don't know. I don't think so because I don't think this is about Ukraine and Russia. Yeah. Now. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people are very concerned that this is going to spark World War Three. Well, I think it was about Ukraine and Russia in the beginning, last time we spoke. But again, opportuni the, the opportunity presents itself and opportunists then see 
you know, like if you want to talk about um, Iran, China, North Korea, especially Iran and China in this case, they see, oh, we can get involved in this and it's going to benefit us. You know, even on the way of, well, look, they're giving all their money to these people. That giving away $60 billion weakens our country, mm -hmm. significantly weakens our country. And it will for a couple of generations. You don't just grow $60 billion on a tree. So helping Russia stay in this thing benefits China, benefits Iran on all kinds of levels. And if we just keep playing along and every time you know, Ukraine puts their hand out, we put money in there just to kind of keep this going. It's just, it's kind of like petals just falling off a flower, right? Yeah. And then who knows what happens after that? You know, the World War Three thing is interesting. It's, there's always, I think we talked one time, there's always that one little event that happens when you look back on it, whether it's World War One, World War Two, that triggered the whole thing and it didn't seem like a big deal in the beginning. Revolutionary War was like that as well. And, and it's like, oh, that's what sparked that whole big thing? It doesn't seem like it, right? It's not some big, massive event. It's, it's the small one that sparks it. And then these little things that trickle after, next thing you know, it's World War II or, or whatever the case is. Hey, everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.